All right, I think we're live. Okay, we're gonna to talk today about da, 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 the crushing truth behind carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay, so carpal tunnel, have you had any experiences with it? Um, have you had any friends, family that have had trouble with carpal tunnel? Um, sometimes in cases of conservative, I mean, you're going to a therapist, chiropractor, massage therapist, you, you know, you do some traditional stretches, let's say, you know, kind of stretching the wrist, trying to open up that carpal tunnel area, but you still don't get relief. You know, why, you know, why is that occurring? And there's a few different thoughts on maybe why either conservative treatment, you know, stretching it out, um, bracing, sometimes night bracing, things like that, um, doesn't work. Um, or in cases where you've had carpal tunnel syndrome and you've had surgical, what they do in surgery is essentially they take the, uh, the, the, the tunnel that makes up the carpal, this, these ligaments right here that cross over the top of the tunnel, and they essentially cut it and open it up, and then the nerve can pass through this area without being compressed and causing tingling, numbness. Sometimes you'll get a little atrophy in this area. What atrophy means is the muscle kind of shrinks, okay? When that happens, that's very serious. Sometimes even when you have surgery, um, it doesn't come back. So you start developing real weakness with grip, you know, opposing things like that, uh, your thumb, you know, anything like that, start dropping things, um, that's very serious. So anyway, so, okay, so we're in a scenario. Did all the stretches for carpal tunnel. Maybe I went on YouTube and I tried to do a few things that they suggested by therapists in Atlanta or whatever. But they go in there and you just don't have success. So what might be going on here? There's a thing called double crush. So, double crush. Hence our name, the crushing truth syndrome. Da, 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 da. Anyway, so double crush syndrome basically is at two or more spots, the nerve is being compressed in other areas in your arm. So you have the actual spot, the first compression site right here, where the nerve runs through. And then you have other spots. So this is uh, of someone that's standing here or a skeleton here. So this is the nerve that's being crushed in the tunnel is the median nerve, okay, all right? Um, it provides sensation, uh, pain, and also provides some motor, meaning it provides some strength. Like we were talking about, these muscles in this area, the nerve going to there actually is, is crushed. So sometimes opposing your hand or moving your hand across or your thumb across is affected. So this nerve originates further up the chain. So it actually goes through at a couple different spots, okay? There's a spot, in the pec minor area in this region right here okay where it can get compressed so these nerves that end here go underneath a few structures or through a few structures up higher in the chain they also can go through some of the scalenes these muscles on the side of the neck here okay right in this region here pec minor sometimes even in some cases uh, the first rib is actually elevated it can be from a trauma or from a repetitive movement um, and these, th this rib essentially can come up and compress the nerve, okay? The other part, lastly, is the neck, okay? From the neck here, right as the nerves are exiting the spinal cord, right through here, as they go, before they even hit the scalenes, these muscles here, they come right off this portion of our spinal cord through the scalenes down here. So at two or more sites, those nerves are being compressed um, sometimes up here, and what happens is it, it reduces the, um, it puts more pressure on the nerve, so the nerve is more susceptible, you have a greater chance of it actually having problems further down. And what they found is, in interesting cases, there's a high incidence of people having carpal tunnel on both sides. So they think that the compression, the, 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 the origin of the problem is up, up here, and you're actually getting, we don't show the other arm, but it can actually be through both your arms. So, and that can cause the median nerve on either side to be more at risk. So uh, that's one of the things. So it's called, the, the, the syndrome is called double crush. Um, and it's important when we see people here in the clinic that we make sure that we look at these other spots. We do kind of a postural evaluation. If some of these muscles that we talked about, the pectoralis minor, um, some of the scalenes, or even something at the neck level, we'll make sure we'll check their range of motion. We'll see how they're, if they've got good, I call it extension right here, good rotation, do they have any tightness around these areas that might be putting some pressure on the origin. That's kind of the foundation of the nerve. This is kind of like, this is the water plant and this is our house. All the water that's going to our house, if there's a problem at the water plant, 
and further down and our plumbing's a little bit, the street plumbing's a little bit tighter, there's a little reduced pressure, there's less pressure down here. But when there's less pressure through the nerve, it's more easy to kind of compress it. It's almost like a garden hose that's got a lot of pressure. It's harder to push on it to compress it. When it doesn't have a lot of pressure going through it, it's easier to press it and put your foot down on that garden hose. So this garden hose right here, um, since it's being, the garden hose is being pressed up here, and maybe even a couple other points, and pressed down here, it's easier to compress it down here and pinch the nerve or crush the nerve. And so in some cases, surgeons um, are saying, listen, the reason why we think your surgery didn't work for your carpal tunnel was because the nerve was compressed a little higher up in the chain. And, uh, you know, so a lot of times if they do have that surgery, uh, I like to, before, they, if I can get to the people beforehand, I like to really work on good mobility at the neck here, try and make sure some of these sites are not tight, okay? Uh, sometimes we'll also give you some strengthening exercise, so posture, you know, a better position, and these muscles don't get as tight. When the pec, when you kind of lean forward, the pec minor can kind of pull you forward and pull the scapula forward, and that can kind of give some problems there. So we look at some things in the uh, upper quadrant, I'll call it, this quadrant from the neck and the shoulder, and kind of make sure all the mechanics are pretty good. Anything's a little tight, we stretch it, a little weak, we'll try and balance the body there. But Hopefully, if that is, that's not part of the equation here. So we'll look at clearing the neck, making sure the neck isn't giving you trouble, and look at these structures. So if you're having trouble with your carpal tunnel, and it's just not getting better, it could be that you just really need surgery, um, if you haven't had surgery. Uh, if you're doing bracing, you're still having a lot of night pain, you're getting grip, uh, problems with your grip, you're getting weakness. Um, you really want to take care of it quickly. You don't want to meddle around with this too much. If it's early stages where you just have some pain, tingling, maybe some night pain, um, you come to a therapist, make sure they're addressing some of these areas uh, to make sure they're not contributing to it. And, um, you know, you got half the picture. You're kind of, you're getting, you're missing part of a treatment that may help you. There are cases where people have um, things called uh, neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy, and they just, you know, um, they're more susceptible and they don't understand exactly where the neuropathy comes from, but it can seem like carpal tunnel as well. So keep in mind, these are some of the things that can occur if you're not having good success with a carpal tunnel surgery, um, or if you're just not doing well with um, doing some conservative care for carpal tunnel. Uh, so some of the things to think about, um, really don't want you to miss this. This is a big thing that you wanna really make sure that's not contributing. And sometimes you do have cases where we think it's a carpal tunnel. In actuality, it's, it's actually a neck issue or a thoracic outlet syndrome, which we talked about on another video. So sometimes it's good just to address the neck, because sometimes when we have, and it doesn't happen that often, we address the neck, we treat the neck, we help them out with some mobility, some range of motion. This was tight. All of a sudden, the carpal tunnel syndrome symptoms go away. And we haven't even stretched the wrist and the forearm. We haven't done anything there. And it gets better just because of that. So it's important to really have good communication with the therapist wherever you may go. I hope you come to us, but if you don't, well, make sure, make sure you, you know, look at that and ask your therapist, your doctor, could the neck be contributing to some of the, our problems? Now, so what's the gold standard? Let's back up a little bit. What's the gold standard? So how do we know if this nerve is being compressed? Listen, there's certain tests that can tell, that can provoke symptoms that are going on there that we'll do in the clinic, you know, we'll check. Um, um, the gold standard is a nerve conduction test. So what's a nerve conduction test? A nerve conduction test is, all these nerves, let's say the median nerve is one of the peripheral nerves in the body. They all conduct, they all travel at a certain speed, like a, like a car, let's say, okay? So let's say this is the median nerve. The median nerve, let's say the median nerve goes at 60 miles per hour. Okay, so that's the speed that the median nerve travels at, okay? But uh, when we do this nerve conduction study, we see that the nerve, when it passes this point, let's say it's passing this point. So let's pretend this is the carpal, this is the, uh, this is the, t the carpal ligament and this is the transverse carpal ligament right over here. This is cross the tunnel. So this is our tunnel right here. All of a sudden it goes down to 30 miles per hour from 60 to 30 when it crosses that site. That tells us that that nerve is not healthy. Something's pinching it and getting pressure, just like on that garden hose, pressing it, and the pressure is a little less further further down the chain. Excuse me. So um, so how do we tell? This test is not a fun test. 
Um, I'll say honestly, um, it's kind of interesting. They actually put needles in these nerves and they're trying to see how fast is the nerve conducting. Um, it also tells us for sure if this is the site where um, the pressure, the compression is coming from. If the 60 miles an hour is here and the nerve beyond that mile is 60 miles per hour, then we know that that's probably not being compressed at that site. Maybe there's something else. Maybe this have some. Maybe we're getting other problems in the area. Maybe we have arthritis in the thumb. Um, maybe we have something going on uh, through some of the tendons in the region. Maybe something else is generating pain in there. But the, but the nerve conduction test will basically see if there's at different points, and you can look at different points up the chain, does the conduction change? It's a very, very painful test, so I hope no one ever has to do it. <laughs> and I will say as a, as a side comment, it's amazing, um, not just pandering, but women are like, ah, oh, it's not a bad test. Men are so much, they're wimps about this test. They always say it's the worst test in the world. Women are like, eh, wasn't so bad. Uh, I would never want to have this test because <laughs> you're basically going into these nerves and seeing how fast they conduct. So, so anyway, so that's a nerve conduction test. That's really the only way that you can definitively, absolutely tell whether you have median nerve compression. And generally they'll do this uh, pre-surgically to make sure um, they're on the right path. If this is at the same miles per hour, it's not 60 and then it's still, this is the, this is the tunnel, this is 60 miles per hour here. Uh, that means it's probably not the site. They also know from research that they know, let's say um, they also know at different areas, they'll know how fast the median nerve normally conducts. And they'll, that also provides some information of what's the normal transmission. Because if the median nerve normally conducts at 60 miles per hour, but when they test it along the way, it's actually going slower. There could be other neuropathy or other problems going on there as well that have nothing to do. And you, you'd hate to have you do surgery and, and find out um, that that was not the origin of the problem. So these are some things for uh, food for thought. Um, next, uh, the next time we do a Facebook Live, we're probably gonna show you some basic stretches for the uh, pectoralis minor, which can give some compression here, maybe a couple carpal tunnel stretches, maybe some scalene stretches, and maybe some stretches for the neck. They don't always apply to everyone, but we'll talk a little bit about that next time if you have it. But really, if you have carpal tunnel, um, really be aware of this dynamic. It's called double crush. It can actually happen in other nerves in the body. I just happen to highlight carpal tunnel because it's one of the ones that lots of people have heard about and um, it's more well known. But you can know the areas of the body that can be crushed at different different spots. It can mean the lower extremities. Um, some of these things can occur from a trauma, you know, a direct force blunt. Um, these nerves, uh, if you've taken off the pressure off the nerves, they can slowly repair depending on the health of the nerve the health of the individual, people that are older, diabetics, things like that, the healing won't take as it won't take it'll take longer or it won't occur. Um, but you can really make a difference with some of this depending on when you get it. Um, but if you do have a nerve that's really giving you progressive weakness, so just to backtrack, another side note: if you're really getting weak rapidly, that's one of the biggest indicators you want to see a doctor really quickly. You know, it's 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 a very quick progression. You'll notice that with lower back problems, if they say I'm getting weakness in my feet or my arms, you want to really address that quickly. If you're just weak and it's not progressing, it's less of a concern. If you're starting to notice like, wow, you know, over the course of the week or even a month or so, my grip is really changing. I used to, you know, be able to turn, let's say, pick up a 10 pound jar and not drop it. Now I could barely hold it and that happened in a week period. Um, that's a big concern. That's not just, we should ignore it. Because sometimes, even when you surgically release the nerve, that might be, or release the, the, um, the structure that's pinching the nerve, sometimes that weakness remains. So you don't want to disregard that. You really want to get in there and see a doctor quickly. Whether it be coming from your back, having a pinched nerve in your back, um, whether it be a, a nerve in your, in, your, in your arm here, or something that's causing a big problem. So um, that's my word, my food for the thought for the day and for the weekend. So I hope this helps you out and you learned a little bit uh, on our broadcast today. Okay, have a great day.